Vodafone presents the pre-match. And with spring right around the corner, it's just about time to start consolidating your household items. That's right, a little bit of spring cleaning is in order, but in our case, it's going to be a consolidation. In fact, it's a consolidation final, and the winner of this is going on to the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice Major 2019. And boy, it's been a long ride for these teams that find themselves in this position. My name is Trace Dennis Aranthus, and well, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to those that are also going to be joining me here on the desk, and they have all minor long. It's going to be Chad the Sponge Burchill, or Sponge A, I'm not sure. We'll get back to that one. We are sure. Yes, okay. Uh, we have Jonah Natu Lepinen, and then we've got you at home. So thanks for joining us in what will be the last best of three in the entirety of the minors. The last hurdle. The last hurdle, the last big jump, and for what it's worth, the big match. This is where all the money is on the line here, and by that I mean figuratively. Sure, yeah, and I think that obviously right now, like we presented in the last game, north of the clear favorites, but the one issue is they've already played Vici today and they've lost. They got blown out of the server on Inferno, which was a map that, sure, we were questioning whether they should have gone with Train or not, but that doesn't really matter at this point because they found themselves in a position where they have a stronger map pool, they have more experienced players, they would... I guess on paper, have bigger stars, better names, and they should be taking this one. It should be a similar affair to what we just saw versus Envy, if you were with us then. Yeah, I think in this matchup, North are their own biggest enemy. Yeah. It's it's as clear as that, basically. You know, we want to see them play more fr free-flowing. We want to see their individuals really showcase what they're capable of, because we know they, they have a higher skill ceiling than the, than the of uh, VG. So that's I feel like that's going to be the culmination point here, basically. Basically. End of. End of story. You know what? Just pack it up. We're done here. Yeah. I think call the cops. We're done. But no, what we're going to do is actually take a look in more in depth at the roster of that of Vici Gaming. Now, we did just watch North. So let's see what they're packing over in the Vici side, guys. What can you tell me about, uh, I, I guess, this lineup? So I think if we look back towards the Asian minor, you had Freeman on your screen right now as one of the players who was actually the highest rated. So that's something which came from a little bit left field. And Kaze, the AWP player for Vici, he's been having some good maps as well. We saw him do things on Dust 2. When he has maps, when he has comfort zones, he's hitting those shots. He could be consistent. People may have remembered the name Zoe King. It looks like he has a super high sense. It's actually the other way. Very low sense, very big swipes. <laughs> Advent in the best of one against the likes of North early today. Stepped up and had a mammoth game for him. And then we cannot forget the last man, Orman, who has been just consistently solid throughout. So there is firepower on this roster, but the way that they approach the game is not the most tactical. Their map pool is not super deep. They're just going to do it the classic way from Asian CS, and that's taking duels, yeah. taking fights, and catching players off guard. And you talk about it being a very classic way, and it's also a very unorthodox way. And I think that's what actually catches a lot of these teams off. Of course, you don't want to mess with the Zoking. Yeah, and you don't want to mess. <laughs> you, wanna, you don't want to mess with Kaza either. I don't think he uh, he's very capable with that AWP. I think he makes smart plays most of the time. Uh, he's not like overly aggressive, but not like a passive one, just holding corners. He has a pretty good feel on when 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 does he need to be mobile and make some moves. I think he had a um, situation like a year ago where he had like a wrist problem or something. So it's it's good to see that he's capable of of, of coming back and and being able to play as as well as he has. Well, there is no other victim than what we will be looking at next. And when I say victim, I mean this could very well catch them off guard. They have been a little bit shaky in recent form, but they have somehow managed to squeak their way into this portion of the minor, the last match to be played to determine that spot in the major. It's going to be north. Now, we did just watch them take on Envy. Did do it in pretty dominating fashion. Sure. And I guess if we start to look at this roster, it should be of no surprise. You're going to see some very familiar names up there. Gade, Voldemort, Kadian, K or B, and Mr. AZ. Now, one thing I'm going to have to ask you guys about is why is north in this position very good question i, I don't I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think we have that straight up answer i don't think anyone does i don't think north has it themselves i i feel like this is just a case of them making this into too big of a deal where they should have all everything all the qualities you need to to have already qualified considering what happened to mouse sports in the european minor right so it's, it's a weird one. Yeah, how many opportunities does a team of this caliber need, right? <laughs> when you look at this, if people are going to critique the fact it was two best of ones, they have absolutely lost their mind because you have to look at the fact this is the third place teams from all of the minors. Right. The minors. How many bloody best of threes do we need to get through to the next stage, all right? We've already had upgrades in format. Right now... They're going to miss the five. Why not? Yeah, like how, how oh, many oh, maps oh, do we... How, like, let's not give anybody any ideas around here. <laughs> let's, let's just, you know, get that out of the way for one second. But this North roster is led by Vol. 
Wilder, who's just been absolutely yeah. a, a mammoth player, just consistent for these guys for the better part of six months, it feels like now. Yeah. Then you have the likes of Gade, who I think who's gets a lot of impact frags on their CT sides. He's good for two almost every single time, and he plays in forward positions, which really stifle set pieces. Yeah, Let's, so oh, go ahead. No, I just want to say that I, I'm really looking at AC because he, he's the kind of player that we've seen can then really come to a, a, like have these massive games, but it's just the, the, the fact that he's so inconsistent. It, it just yeah. he falls away from the from the radar completely at times, and and you can't really have that. But there's not going to be a bigger moment for these guys to step up individually, right? So some of the troubles, some of the the trials, the tribulations, even the stumbling points for either of these lineups, that all has to come to an end now. And I believe we can start to focus the conversation around these maps because again, this yeah. is a rematch of sorts. And if we look at the maps before. Now, should it be any easier for either of these teams? I think it should be much easier for North at this yeah. point, right? Because when you're vetoing down to one, it's going to be a common ground or at least a map that Vici practiced or at least played on a regular basis. So overpass and nuke bands, there's nothing too unexpected there. I think that we're probably going to see North go for like a, you know, like a dust two punish. North are a pretty good dust two team. There and we go. saw the strugglesomes come out from the likes of Vici when they had to play it. Kaze had moments, right? Against sure. that, uh, when we had the Greyhound game, Greyhound, yeah. they definitely look threatening in, in stages, but it's a map where a team like North should be able to smother them, I think. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I think that's a map where they're just the fact that they're so good at doing um, decisions in, in those like flowing situations where it's just all a matter of basically snap of fingers, right? And I think that's where they will, they will just demolish Vigi. And now if you're north and you get to start on the CT side of Inferno, right, and you're already warmed in, they've played a lot right. of maps now at this point, being able to lock down and shut out, it should be very easy to do now because they have all the protocols in place that have better utility usage, getting caught off guard by UMP banana rushes, that's not going to happen again. The things that they know they need to look out for is, okay, well, when they lose pistol, it's, it's highly likely that Vici, they go for that AK drop and they force by behind that very classic Asian style that we used to see back in 1.6. Personally, never a fan of, of picking on a map that you played previously. Mm -hmm. The same day, more or less as well, right? There's so much more the North can learn. There's so many things that they can pick up on because it's really just small little adjustments and they, they could have done much better, right? So that kind of goes to show that there was not a lot of options here for VG in terms of maps, right? Yeah, well, the maps are decided. The tables have been set, and I don't mean that we're going to be having any meal anytime soon, but what we will need to devour, I guess, mm. is who you guys think <laughs> is going to win it at least on the first map here. I think Vici have a very good chance to make things awkward for North. You in certain rounds make them sweat, but I don't think that they have a chance to win this series by any means. I'm sticking with North here to be able to take this one in 2-0 fashion because it feels like their heads are in the right place and this is just going to be a sigh of relief for them and the organization. I think VG will make it awkward for North 100%, but North definitely has all the all the qualities they need to be able to come out out of this and, and making their way to the major. Yeah, and this is going to be the telling moment for Danes all across the world. It has been a remarkable past year of Counter-Strike for one Danish team in particular, and in this case, it's going to be one team trying to just get their foot in the door there at the Intel Extreme Masters Major. And, well, there is no better time than now to make it all come very much true. It's going to be Vici and North going head-to-head -head in the best of three for the last match of the minor system here in the play-in tournament. And to do that, we brought in some familiar faces, fresh, maybe, maybe not, but nonetheless, it's Harry and Hugo, and they're ready to get it on. Yes, indeed, Trace. How are we doing in Brighton, Harry? Obviously, I've, I've never even been there, but, you know, just to, just to wrap it. Either way, final best of three of the minors. This is pretty sick. And and North, obviously, you know, going up against a team they lost to earlier today in that best of one over on Inferno. Analysts at least predicting that North are going to get away with this. And Chab was saying in the green room that he, he thinks this is a 2-0, but what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm going to be honest, I think Vici take this series. And, and no one agrees with me. <sighs> only, I, only I think you. that's, I, you know, I, I'm going to be honest. I think North, they've shown a real tendency to crumble under pressure, as demonstrated by the fact that they had two chances to secure this major spot. They failed both times, falling to the likes of Ents, for example, and obviously very good team, but then they lose again to Vitality. You know, I think coming into this, Vici, they've looked so good. It's it's hard for me to not have some faith in this roster. You are such a crowd pleaser, Harry, but let's see if it does come true as we head into the final best of three here of the minor. It is, of course, North starting on the T side of their map pick. Vici getting that pick and already into the pistol round. Three players down in the lower tunnels for North. We've got Orman getting aggressive and zoking up on Catwalk as well. Already two kills coming out for Orman, and he's just been so damn good. 
Starting things off and really throwing a whirlwind into this round. North now had three men left up to try and get themselves back into this one, but with limited utility, Valde just getting spammed through the smoke. He cannot catch a break. Down to 16. Great shot from Valde. But surely, surely he gets nothing more. Well, there's Kirby managing to find Kaze over here in mid. Palms doubling all the way back in through T-Spawn. Valder and Kadian going to have it. Zoking repositioning in from CT up towards this A-bomb site. And the timing might be right for him here. So he sets himself up on the car. There's no smoke for the cross. No Molotov to deal with the man there either. So if Orman's able to deal with Kirby down in middle, he could be a real force to be reckoned with. Zoking, as mentioned, they don't have a Molotov to check this portion of the map, but missed shots at a crucial moment. Valder's going to pick that up. And now Orman trying to hold this cross, but the run boost on over. North just styling in this pistol round. And Orman and Advent left standing. Both players retaken from CT, and that bomb planted for this long position. That is where Valder resides right now. But he's wrapping round three short. This does give them a two-on-two. -two. Now a 1v2 over at the ramp. Valder should solidify this round. He should seal their fate. And Orman just back it off. It's going to be North fighting the pistol here to kickstart Dust2. Yeah, I'm glad they actually got the run boost off. You see a lot of times teams fail that. And so considering that that initially was that B play with the one smoke the North had used by Valde getting dropped up in the tunnels, North still able to get that bomb down on the site and solidify a pistol round. So Orman, he has escaped. He saved his measly armor. But it won't be a round win here for Vici as North t uh, take things in their map, picking their stride. Already a 1-0. Now Vici Gaming have to throw up that decision whether they want to force up into the second, whether they want the early buy. And we have seen Vici on this map just go for that scout. Sometimes the double scout. Get deagles, get 5-7s, get armor. Pretty typical from the Asian team, but yeah, you know, fourth round by, you're going to have the orb, you're going to have all the utility, and, and Kaze, he may have struggled earlier in, uh, in their game back on overpass, but throughout this tournament, he's been an absolute monster, so we do want to see him back on that AWP nice and early on. North on the other side of things, heavy on the rifles, fast cap play already coming through. Oh, Advent's going to make a lot of noise, so they know that he's here, and that will be Kirby deleting him on, and Drops that smoke close, but they're going to have the idea that he's uh, that he's in this position. Oh, going to be Gade picking it up. One HP, pretty devastating if you are. Old Orman up on short now, zoking on this wrap round. Kirby dispatches of him, and Freeman and Kaze left standing, but you don't imagine there's much love for these two in this round. Freeman trying to find something with the D creeping on out through. Ooh. Okay, he does get Kirby, but now they know that he's here and this should just be them dealing with him. Or even just walking away, not giving him these gunfights. Great flash in middle though. Freeman gets completely caught out in the open. And like Lambs to the Slaughter, Vici, they are going to be getting nothing in this round. A single kill, Gates on HP, but unlikely they're going to be able to finish off that frag. Kaze. Looking for these kills from the car, looking to get some exits. Indeed, oh, what a shot from Kaze. Dear. Kadian's dead, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem for North. There's no real reason to chase too heavily, and Valdi had already wrapped long in that meantime, so North are going to get away with all three guns, all three of those rifles into the next round. Now, Vici still have four USPs ahead of them in this one before we do see that buy. a confident start from North into their map pick. Exactly what we really required from this team in this best of three series. Like it goes without saying that there's no way North should in theory be losing this game considering the caliber of the caliber of these players. But these guys do know or are known to crumble under pressure. Oh, and this time just North keeping things clean. They're getting off to a good start. Now, as to remember, obviously, one of the things that we looked at when we saw Vici Gaming on this map just the other day was the fact that as even as individuals, regardless of as a team, this isn't a map they've ever really elected to play. It's a dust too, not one that this uh, majority, Chinese majority squad feel too comfortable on.
Obviously, with Inferno coming up next, this is the map that Vici bested North on earlier. So you're hoping if they do take a map anywhere, that that's going to be where it lies. The one issue with that, I think, that they're going to face is North. If they can keep this up, if they can just get off to a blistering start, take a really dominant victory here on Dust, that's when I think, you know, the pressure is going to really get to the Vici guys. I think, you know, to have resilience at this point after you fought so hard, not just through the Asia Minor, but then through the play in tournament as well to have things go so dominantly in favor of the opponent could really hurt the uh, the morale over on this Vici gaming side. So let's see though if they can at least make this map look up a bit as flashes rain down into middle. Freeman getting it flashed off the angle of north. As we saw from all the times back in the EU minor, if you recall, the way that they love to play this map was just for the most part these faster plays into this B bomb site, the mid smokes, mid splits into B. Here it comes again. The smoke is down. This gives North the ability to move up close, even get this boost, because the smoke's actually down the stairs, lower. And Zoken plays the corner. They need to check the spot. They have SMGs. And Kiev has found one. The bomb thrown over the site. And Freeman, he's going to be locking it down. Two from him. Valde now alone. Six and zero on this man to start off this map. And I certainly can't say this is undoable for him. He fakes out that B site, throws in more utility. This is going to force the rotate on the back line. But Karte, he is aware. AWP shot, saves the day there for Vici, not giving Valde the room to find the clutch. The Chinese, they're off to a start, Harry. First round taken on the CT side. Yeah, they're able to repel that signature North B play that we saw work for them so many times. So a good sign from Vici early on. We know this is a team that certainly has been uh, keen on doing their homework. But Freeman getting tagged on the cross. That softened up the man inside of B, and you can already see North look tempted. They've started to get a foothold over here in mid, pushing Gade into this portion of the map. Zoking. oh, it does spot him, and he gets quite fortunate as well, because you could tell he didn't know he was there. That Molotov going to really... Make Gade oh, feel no. a little bit uncomfortable and actually gets flashed in. That's Zoking to drop the man in mid. Now this B play looking to come through and they have found Freeman, the man who Kadian tagged on that cross at the start of the round. Bomb's going to go down. Now three players over towards Tunnel. Bomb will be planted for them. Four in the retake, Molotov up on AZ, smoke for Kazi, but you don't see Vici going for this. They're just going to back off. They give this up. They don't fancy their odds in the 4v4. North will be securing a fourth round. And a lot of that just due to the constant re-smoking down in the door, right? North, they didn't try and go for the heavy mid to B split. Rather, upon knowing they got the tag potentially, Gabe was just meant to hold off those rotates in middle, but the Molotov catches him. It moves him forward. The flashbang is well timed from Vici. And even though they take that 4-4 four and four immediately, they lose the bomb site. And, well, as we know with Dust 2, it's so difficult to get back into there once you've lost it, even with man advantage. But reset coming through for North. They've broken the money back of Vici, so this save was very important. It does allow for the rebuy to come through from these CTs. And, of course, keep this AWP in play. And now Kadian even has one to his, for his own. Just going to be holding mid, though, for that cross again. And, oh, look at this setup from Vici. They've got heavy up towards long with this rifle round. Maybe expecting a faster play from North once again. Double molly, single smoke. They've really rounded up. But North are going to go very, very fast up the catwalk again, realizing that with two mollies down in the long doors, Vici do have a foothold on that position. North would rather take advantage of the positions they don't own, and one of them being the catwalk. So now these T's are all the way up there. Cars are going to attempt to get the man advantage under control. Move up with this AWP. Great position. The issue is if more than one player pushes around this corner, he gets a max of one. There's going to be an instant trade, but that smoke certainly going to ward him back. Throws a molly to try and contain that of North to stop them from going for this cat drop towards CT spawn, something that North do like to do as well. But delayed playing for this mid to be, it seems. Either way, it's actually looking like a bit of a fake with this bomb going back up catwalk and an a site hit may be the call from North. Well, Valdep still looking curious as to what mid might hold in store. And 
as he creeps on out. He's going to try and duck dive into CT. Woman does find Val then. How Kazi trying to step up to the plate here. This push him out to come in. And actually, no North. Ooh, they double no. back. Bazoking. He's already holding mid, and they're not ready for him. He's done a lot of damage, but Kadian able to trade him, and now they they start to barrel towards his B bomb site. Advent on this wrap round does drop Kadian, but not before he's managed one. Freeman just has to stand his ground and buy that much more time as now it falls onto Gade. A one v three, and Freeman steps up to the plate. Vici going to be in with their second round. That could have worked out a lot better for North if Valdi didn't give away the fact that he'd snuck through that smoke, uh, smoke in the spawn. He shoots one shot, essentially a pre-fire to the corner, but as a result, it means they know he's there. And Vici, they have that mid crossfire enabled, so they're very easily able to rotate a man back into that B, B bomb site when North do rotate through the tunnels. Plus, Soaking's position in mid gives him so much info. So Freeman, he's set up, he's got a Molotov there, and he's able to pick up the last couple of kills to shut down North. Now, Harry, what have we got here? Another B rush, it seems. I mean, North have shown that they love these. They're going to go back to basics. That smoke going down. Okay, maybe it's deterred them a bit. Now they're not too keen on this idea. You do imagine some of that is down to Freeman playing this B by himself on his lonesome. Now Zoking this time around has come rotating in. Pressure going to be applied at this area of the map by North, but showing their hand. Instead, it is back down towards middle. We've seen this from them round after round. They try and secure this little foothold here. This time, it's almost the entire team committed to taking mid control away from Vici. In the meantime, important to keep an eye on Advent. He's pushed all the way up towards long here. And he might hear some of these players, namely AZ, starting to now group up, move down towards short. They flashed off the angle. Does have to drop on down. And Kirby shedding up for the short play. Three players down here in mid. And this looks like it should culminate in this B split with Kirby to try and drop down into CT. But he's been dispatched. Of Gade's been dropped. And this is all falling to pieces for North. Zo King's in with another. Advent finding the lone gunman over towards short in the form of Valder and Orman finishing things off. Vici take a dominant third round with all five players staying alive. And I love the switch up from Vici. They constantly remain dynamic in middle as they catch out North. That round they go for one player in the B site and a second just playing the door. Here's Zo King. And he's able to just pivot between the boxes and the door, shutting down his mid to B split. No flashes there for North despite having great utility usage to even fake out that A site. They forced Kaze off of short. They, you know, got a good foothold in towards A, but then when it came for the mid split, no flashes. And Zoking has a free reign there. So North now got to be broken on pistols. Not exactly the result they would have wanted after taking this early lead on their map pick, setting up three to one at one point, even four to one. With that reset included. So this round, just a bit of a long play here out from these T's. Now that he's on the other side, he's just going to spray away. Three kills, even a headshot on the third. One bullet clipping Gade and Valde while he's out in middle. Cadian's just trying to come through long and he's still walking through this meat grinder to try and grab the bomb. It will not work. Advent with three, Vici with four. And we're all evened up. And I know if they do have enough money to go for a buy in this round, but I'm wondering if we see them go for it, Hugo. It's still early days. And they still have a decent bit of room to work with. I imagine we could just see a partial investment here, opting instead to try and bring the AWP out and Cadian as much as they can. I think it completely depends on what they want to throw in, right? We've seen a lot of these very heavy B plays from North. Now, you can just get pistols, armor, and a lot of the utility and go for these splits, but with 4,400 on the majority of players, they can get a good buy. So there's no reason, unless you really wanted to play around that 1 AWP. Buy here is easily accessible, and North will still have it in a couple of rounds to come. Plus, next round, if they can win this and pick it up from Kaze. Oh, look at this beast spawn though from North. I mean, four players right outside of the site. There's no way you don't take advantage of that. So while we have Kiebi watching down mid to spot for the amount of crossing players, the rest of North are going to be running up into these tunnels. Even if you don't commit, just establishing early control and even throwing a couple of flashes in like North have in the past to bait out these Molotovs is really helpful. It means later in the round, Vici aren't going to have those nays to slow you down when you go to those 30, 40 second pushes. 
In fact, North don't want to wait that long. They don't want to give that much room. Freeman playing this close position. We've seen this before from Vici. Never netted more than one kill, and North have been aware of it. So Flash is there. Freeman's off the angle, but do they check the corner? They do. AZ pivoting round. Kaze now from the door, in with the first man. Oh, and the second as well. He was a big question mark for me. Is are we going to see the Kaze we saw earlier? The oh, Kaze no. from the rest of the Asia oh. Minor. And one thing is for certain, he's showing up how we needed him to right now. Three kills on the cross. That whiff from Kadian, you feel like, could have made all the difference for North in this round. Zoking's there to cement the fifth for Vici. Now up five to four. I mean, two problems there for North. The smoke in the door not being good enough to even cover the cross. And Kaze gets three. And then, as you say, Kadian... Big whiff. Definitely could have salvaged that round if he finds one kill and just stays alive in the spawn because Vici mean Vici would have to give up fighting the bomb site to watch their backline, allowing that bomb to actually cross and the smoke in the door would no longer be a factor for uh, Kaze to find that final kill. Yeah, I'm going to be honest as well. I, mean, I think if Kaze can keep this form, you know, the one that we've seen from him throughout all of the Asia Minor, the, the, the showing that he had there was phenomenal. He was the top, he was the fourth highest rated player of the entire thing, along with Freeman, who was the highest. And, uh, you know, if, if he can roll back to that, I think then, you know, the AWP duel between Kaze and Kadian, it becomes pretty easy to predict who's the victor there. Kaze is this very flashy, consistent AWPer. And well, here he is heading over towards short. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. Flash is going to rein in on the back of this. It, try and force him off the angle. He has support from Orman over at the ramp, but Kaze, there we go. First man found now in the smoke. Oh, he's face to face with this man. Kaze players all around and he's going to get helped out by Orman and Freeman. They mop up this push and somehow in amongst all those smokes, all that, all that confusion, five players managing to stay alive for Vici yet again. And you could see how fast that rotation was from Vici. That's why they, they got away with so many players alive. I mean, it was very, very clear that North were hitting that uh, short position. Because typically, if North are going to go for a B player, a mid split, for, for example, they'll throw that short smoke up. They'll force Kaze off of Catwalk. But that round, and then they'll pressure mid, right? But that round, they just go for the, the, the short play. So it's completely blindingly obvious for Vici. They have five players on the site before you know it. But it was only pistols for North. And now they've got guns. Kaze! Oh, oh no. my goodness. This is what we wanted to see from this man. Kaze in with the quick flick collateral. This man has it all. And Kaze, oh, he's going to get collateral back. One after the other. Now it's Valdez stepping up. That was one bullet to the head of Freeman that went through and killed Kaze. He was sitting on 8 HP. One bullet per player, but Valdi needs a few more. What a recovery from North, or more specifically, Valdi is currently on a hat trick. Yeah, we're going to cut down mid, and Valdi's there for assistance. It's another round for North. What on earth? What is going on? I we knew that this that this uh, you know the mind the minor play-ins would be an exciting time. We knew that these four teams going head to head would lead to some exciting moments, but getting two in in the same round, one after the other, Valdi didn't even mean to get the second man. Couldn't even see him, Harry. The smoke was there. Oh, my Lord. North. Well, they have just been absolutely saved by Valdi. Vici definitely looking like they were going to get control of the CT side, but now North. Oh, a dive into pit. Yeah, we're going to catch our Advent spraying away, and he might be able to get a second one on the corner as well. He's ho hoping for Gay to come through with a kill, and he will assist him as Kiev is put down to five points to help. North are out and long. They even have Catwalk to play with as well, so AZ's got to be careful with this man in the elevator. Orman looking to lift his team out of this three on five. But North, they've slowed down. They backed that bomb right out of the A site. Just containing the long control here, knowing that Vici are likely to have either a big flank or a push somewhere. But Vici playing very reserved here. And one of the big reasons North have stopped is they don't have that smoke for the spawn. And I think Vici almost know it. They have three players dedicated to trying to catch this cross. Now the one smoke they did have where it goes towards CT rather than the cross. So a saving grace there for North. Three on five, damage done, but the bomb part's gonna come in and yeah, Vici's just gonna bail out of this round now. Holding onto their weapons for a rainy day. Six, six here. North keeping it close. Yeah, no, they are indeed. As they tie things up, I am already liking the fact, you know, we got Valdez showing up. We have Kiobi alongside him. It feels like for both of these teams, 
The, the players that we kind of mentioned, the players that we expect to see up towards the top of the board are having a very good showing early on. And that bodes well at least to give us an exciting series at the very least. North will be tying things up 6-6. You're bang on there, but three players staying alive. Avicii, Bai is still very much available in the coming round. Kaze is going to have his orb. They have the potential to move into a double orb setup if they would like between Freeman and Kaze. We've seen them opt to do that a couple of times. If there ever was a time to try it, it's now. Well, you still have some money floating around, but instead they will just be returning to the one orb on Kaze. Rifles for everybody else. And no need for a need for an AWP on North when they keep up this fast-paced aggression. These quick B plays, that immediate long take from Kiebi and Gade. Nice boost from Vici. They could be sending up a bit of a catwalk play to watch lower tunnels, try and stop North's default, but instead Orman gets aggressive. Kaze, that AWP playing the solo A site as Vici sit with two players. Agro A short now. Avin's going to set up a flashbang to allow uh, Orman to peek aggressively into middle at some point, but he does have to care about that lower tunnel because Kiebi's coming through. The flash from the T side is there now. Orman, got to be very cautious, very careful. So he will be falling off. The smoke on Xbox prohibits him from getting aggressive, and he doesn't want to get caught by a player jumping up, so... North are going to be at least gifted this part of the map, but it has cost a lot of utility for them. Now, Kaze up on the A site. He's got to deal with this push-up short. Sure, the split comes out long at the same time. Orman's there with one. A's getting picked off, and 4 HP left on Orman with that bomb getting retrieved. North, they're down a man. Where do they go? Looking like it might be back towards this B-bomb site. Smoke's ready to go down here for the cross in mid. Freeman up in the window has support from Zoking. Freeman going to take this initial peak, does find a lot of damage, and he just goes back to finish it off. In with the second, Freeman has found everybody on this mid play. Vici with the seventh, four players staying up. Money's built back up for Vici almost as soon as it gets called into question. And North, while well, they're still looking good, they're still able to grab the buy here, and AWP has been picked up on Kirby. Imagine that's based on spawn. He does have a long spawn, so we might see him elect to head towards this portion of the map, try and find an opener for North. Tactical pause called on in from the Danes. One of the things, you know, I, I think, you know, everyone can agree Vichy are still coming into this matchup as underdogs, right? Uh, you know, you look at North, you look at the names in this team, you look at time of which we've kind of seen this core together and you know just the the individual caliber of what we're used to seeing from these players and you know one thing i think you have to give props to vici for is as a team that didn't even play dust two until just the other day in that match versus greyhounds they've done a good job of adapting pretty well to uh, to what north have been throwing their way especially when right okay you can do all the practice on a map that you want but pra practice is going to be very different from officials right so considering that was their first official game in months on this map that yeah that's really impressive to actually be able to to adapt and, and you know play a, a top european team i mean harry we have a major winner in the server here and north are facing you know a match where they potentially might not even be able to qualify for it Obviously, them being favourites, you would imagine they would, but Vici at least really bringing them down to the wire here with a round up and another buy in effect. North going to go through middle. There's one cat player as well. Kadian's going to get spotted. Kaze has tried to do this round after round, but every single time the flash has forced him off. This time he gets the shot, and Orman even locks down middle as well. North just taking dry peaks here. It will not work out for them. They're getting out aimed and they're getting out brained. Vici now two men up in this round. And no real utility left for North past this one smoke. And even if they throw it down here, Orman might be able to find a position on top of the box and take down a player, but great shot from Gade. It may have just saved North in this round. Oh, it definitely might have. So taking that peak. And I was going to say, that's not a fight that he ever wins, but he's managed to do it. Now Freeman and Zoking holding down the tunnel. Zoking's going to find them both. It is just a big individual play after big individual play from the guys over on Vici. Zoking, a man who, for the majority of the Asian minor, somewhat slipped under the radar. It was a lot more about his two teammates, Freeman and Kazi. Yeah. Orman having some big moments as well. But we know that Zoking's a force to be reckoned with. 
You know, back on all teams that he was a part of, he was always one of the guys we could look towards. He's very seasoned, you know, one of the seasoned veterans of this squad alongside Advent. And, you know, he's really showing that off now in this play and tournament. We saw in their opening game, it was him and Advent stepping up. Ooh, this just fast playing through long. It is going to catch Orman completely off guard. Advent able to pick up the trade, but Casey, Kazi rather, has been tagged down low. And now Gade emerging from short. They really are caught back by this blistering pace set by North. Kadian and Val, they're just going to chip away at the man inside of the bomb site, but a good flash nets that frag for Zoking. And it's the B team left standing in this two on two. And look at the range of the weaponry North currently possess, a CZ and a UMP, and they're both stuck out on long. Freeman keeping the distance there. And North can't retrieve guns due to this position. They've both been locked in, they've both been caught. And Zoking, he's just got a firing line down through this long. AZ gonna try and close the distance by playing close to the wall, meaning Zoking would need to peek out wide to commit to a fight, but he's happy with doing that with the flashbang assistance from his teammate. Actually blinds him, but AZ as well. Oh, this smoke is about to run dry, but AZ's grabbed himself an AWP to try and increase his range, could take a better fight to the site. Zoking yet to be spotted, and Freeman down in the spawn, gonna hit it with the Orc. This man has been so good with that Orc. Absolutely tearing through North in those last couple of rounds. Vici Gaming sitting 9-6 up on the half and currently leading on North's map pick. Now, will this be a problem? Let's find out on that CT side as we get back after a break. Currently, the score is 9-6 to six in favor of Vici Gaming coming in swinging in that first half. But as we saw in the matchup versus Greyhounds the other day, Hugo, their problems did lie over on this T side. Now, one thing we've commended Vici for was their ability to pick up things and just learn very, very quickly from their mistakes. They would have had a lot to go back and look at from that matchup. But is it going to be enough to stand the test versus the Daves? Let's find out with this cat smoke down, Vici fast playing short. And Already setting up for the long spot as well with Orman coming in through the doors very, very late. Now, North only have two players within this A site, but they have all the info after this tunnel's push, knowing that surely this is going to be the cat play. And it's very, very clear now. Flashes over Valdi. He's going to be hiding on the car. Already spotting one. Him and Kierby in unison, finding a kill apiece. 
and North are getting into this pistol round very strong right now. Cars is going to try and save them, but he gets caught from that short rotate. The tunnels push, paying dividends for North. And already that bomb being stuck, there's nothing Ormond can do with a Glock. And even if he gets a couple of kills, this is all said and done. North, they're going to be taking seven rounds here on the CT side. The start of a comeback in the second half. Now, Orman holding the armor forward. I'm curious if we see maybe a solitary rifle invested in for Vici. It was something they like to dabble in every now and again. But instead, yeah, there we go. Advent buying it up. He's throwing that over to Warman. So we do have this solitary AK buy. It's actually Freeman to purchase up the armor with it. And this is something that we've seen Vici run a lot. North shouldn't be all too caught off by this approach from Vici in this round. Freeman, a man who definitely has the talent and skill to make something like this work. Starts the aggression in from short. Has his team around him to try and soak up some of these bullets. And that will be Kirby making his presence known. Freeman gonna miss all these shots onto Katie and that was really his chance to find something. First kill does come in from this AK, but now has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Katie and Ann Valda at this long portion. Of the map, Val, they're going to drop one. Freeman in with another, but Katie in there to drop him. And now Orman on this flank ground had the chance, had the opportunity, but missed the shot. North in with their eighth. But now we can't see Vici onto this full bite. Yeah, very important that North had uh, had a lot of rifles in that round rather than just going for a, a plain old SMG round in the second, like a lot of teams you know typically do just to make that money. Knowing, as you said, that Vici are very likely to pull in this solo AK-47 into their force buy. Now, it didn't yield much, but they've got four more where that came from as we head into the next round. Advent, the only man having to take a hit, and North still looking fine in terms of the bike. Kadian's confident, and he's rushing the top and middle as well to try and take a kill away. Freeman, more than ready for that push, and AZ may even get caught rotating round. He drops a bomb in spawn, but has to be careful about the lower tunnels push. This org meta is fully engaged over on the north side. Has to is a bit of a playground for this weapon. Lots of mid-range fights in which the CT side do definitely prefer having this weapon in. Oh my gonna throw out a little bit of utility over here towards B just to keep the attention of North at this portion of the map. Oh my now rotated away. And you can see it has removed AZ from mid at the very least, so he's allowed to usurp his way. Up through connector. Now Kirby. Standing here alone. Has Valder with him over at long. A flash gonna get thrown in from Valder. And he needs to do more than that. Zoking finding the opener. The bomb can look to go down. And they're gonna be left in a three on three in this post plant. Bomb planted for short. And they leave Orman at this. Side of the map. Oh, AZ just missed the timing there to Freeman, who re-aggressed down Cat in that position. So important to hold on to this open post part. Now AZ, up close and personal, finds himself a single kill, but Avan gets spammed through the smoke, and now it is just Orman. One short, bowed it, trying to close the distance from Long, but this bomb is already ticking away very, very fast. And Norman, he doesn't have utility to stop this defuse, but Valdi's low, so one or two bullets is all it's going to require. Valdi forces the peak, but Orman gets the information, and Valdi goes back for it again. But Orman, even if he goes down, there's no time here. Valdi gets the kill, but Vici get the round. Three for Valdi in there, and ten to the Chinese. One step closer to taking away North's map pick. Yeah, they might lose everyone, but that's the thing. And this is where those impacts of Freeman in the previous round with the AK are really going to get felt now by no one, right? You only forced a rebuy on it on a couple of players. I believe they got two kills in that round. But with only Valdez surviving in the round prior, they've cobbled together a very patchwork buy. You can see Kirby, he's invested in armor and then been throwing the org by Valdez, who's now brought up a weapon of his own. They're going to look to try and have the two stars shine bright over on the side of Norse with these solitary rifles in this round. For Vici, the buy they're going to get with everybody falling is not perfect. It's not great. You can see the scout on Kaze. Zoking has an AK. The remaining players, 
Gonna have to make the decision, do you focus on the firepower or do you focus on utility here if you're Vici? Damn it, it's almost not clear who won the previous round with this buy, but... Oh, that's North, looking to try and bite back and get this reset onto Vici. AD nading the top of middle, maybe not choosing to rush at this time. That didn't work out in the previous, and Vici have already established control towards the tunnels with four players. Only Gade on B, and this could be a bit of a problem. He's on three kills currently for North. Already the push coming through, and Gade, he gets one, but fully flashed off the angle, has to fall, doubling it down, but three bullets left in the mag, no time for a reload, the pistol's out, and while AZ misses his nade, he tries to take the attention away, it's Ormond dropping the man on the car, but AZ just being here is delaying this push up for Vici, it's disallowing the bomb part, and the rotation is already in before Vici can make things get out of control, that was a messy round for Vici. Great work from North to shut it down, but honestly, you know, you'd hope, considering they had the better firepower in that round, that they could get a couple of kills, but the smoke eludes them. Gade wastes so much time of these Chinese players. It will be North actually getting that reset, crushing the money of Vici back down to $1,400 after they fully invested. And North taking nine rounds. And this is where the Danes can look to springboard themselves back into this game and back into the lead most likely there's not going to be much money for vg in the next so likely it's the double eco here gade right. okay <laughs> that's a very quick round indeed and that will be north tying things up 10 to 10 this is where as i was saying vici yeah they have enough money on ormond but no one else can actually even afford to buy into this round so it's likely just pistols a bit of a partial investment from them Saving the extra money on cars, I would imagine, to facilitate that AWP buy in the coming round. And this should be where we see North springboard themselves back into that lead. Go 11-10 up and... Looking like they've had a very convincing CT side thus far. Yeah, again, the same uh, the same thing that we saw against Greyhound, right? VG having a very strong CT side and then tapering off in the second half. Currently looking like a bit of a deja vu scenario. One round to their name on the T side. Reflash up short for Kierby. It's going to allow Kadian to peek once contact is made. He just baits here with the UMP. Doesn't commit to a duel until he calls that there's a player in position. That's when Kierby will go for this flashbang. There it is. Flash should be here, but actually Kadian falls off instead. He doesn't want to take the fight. And that's fair enough. You can give Vici a bit of control there. It's not the end of the world. North is still going to be armed far better when it actually comes to this execution from Vici. And it will be a mid to B play. They've got two smokes for it. Gade, he's got to make this, the decision. Does he stay on the right side of the smoke or does he di dive back into CT and hope his B player can hold on? Now, Gade, a great job to find two kills there. That's an orc to be retrieved from Vici if they can get the smoke down in play, but already the flank's coming through. North know exactly what's going on, but AZ getting caught repositioning, not sure what he was trying to do looking back through the window. The tunnel's push is timed well from Vici, and they're going to get the bomb down. Now in a two on three, it's Kaze and Freeman left standing. These two have been the top performers for this team. These two have seen out so many clutches. So definitely not the twosome you want to run into if you are North. Arzi dropped by Kirby. Freeman going to win his fight with the CZ and actually double peeks into that. So Kirby and Valdet, likewise, two top performers in North. That really was the clash of the Titans there inside of the B-bomb site, and it's North to emerge victorious, 11 to 10. But now we get to see this buy from Vici. That one comes down to the wire, and let's not forget that was just a partial investment. Now they have a little bit more to work with. You've got the AWP on Kazi. Is that going to be enough to offset this momentum that North have picked up? Also, they've moved into a double AWP setup. AZ going to be donning that alongside Kadian. Kadian looking like he wants to take this early peek in along. We get to see the AWPers clash early. Missed shot from Kazi, and that's Valde to retrieve the first man and drop that AWP. They waited rounds to purchase it over on the side of Ichi, and it's not going to play into this at all. And now the short push coming through, but they don't know about the secondary AWP. That could be a bit of a surprise. AZ's even got Kierby close in case they rush him. Instead, going back towards the tunnels. Now, take a look at Gade, because he's up in the corner. Because Vici, they did a lot of this over on their CT side, with Freeman in the same position, with the same weapon. Can Gade have better results? 
This flash will be for the right side, but Cage should get blinded for it, assuming he doesn't hit the click and turn around as a result. So sneaking in for Vici, a bit of a surprise play. Gade will miss the flash, and he's going to be able to find two more. Gade is a pillar on this B-bomb site. The Vici, they forgot their tools. They can't take him down, but finally getting the trade is Kiebi coming in through the window in the Molotov. AZ finding the wallbang through the door, and North, they're just going to solidify this round, not even let Vici get past the tunnels. These have been some shut down rounds for North. They have really turned this one on its head. Six rounds on this CT side to only the one of Vici. And Vici starting to run out of options here, Harry. Starting to run out of ideas. Pistols again, all too familiar territory here for the Chinese and North. Four rounds away from taking their map pick. Kadian almost gets caught out there in mid. Doesn't want to go running into the Diga Freeman anytime soon. Val there, lots of confidence building up on him. And if there's one man on this North squad you don't want to let get too comfortable, it is Val there. Such a strong foothold to have within the opening 20 seconds or so of this round. Easy has the first kill to come in. Now players were able to drop into CT and Advent deletes the AWPer at the ramp. They're not quite ready for Kirby and Kaze able to find him armed with just the Glock in his pocket. Freeman able to get the bomb down and out. Two on two ensues. Freeman. Oh, Ooh. he's going to delete Valdez. And now it is just Kadian left standing. A 1v2 required from the AWPer and IGL of North. And he's backing away. He's giving this up. A gut-wrenching call to have to make if you're Katie, and you know that Vici had very little in that round. And there was one thing worth noting. It was AZ actually switching places with Kadian. Oh. They even managed to deny the AWP, so... Very expensive for North if they want to go back into that double AWP setup. One big factor of that round is I think it was Kaze who dropped into the CT spawn off of short. Now, when he does that, he runs along and starts jumping, uh, spotting Kierby over in Goose. And as a result, he can call to his teammates that are pushing around the corner that Kierby's in Goose. He spotted it from CT, but also being very mobile and very hard to hit. That's a nice factor because usually teams just kind of hide the fact that they've dropped CT and try and flank up the ramp. Instead, he uses the position to gain information to help out his team. So it's a nice adjustment there from Vici to manage to pick up this eco round, 12, 11, but still some aggression on the CT side. Now we have players in the lower tunnels, but they are currently constructing a bit of a boost. They will double back, but do they expect the fast pace set by North Cadian? Very, very close to going down there, misses his opening shot. And we'll have to duck out of the tunnels now. This has been somewhat given away to North that Vici have control there, but back towards a catwalk, Kadian gets flashed off and Vici do get this control for free. Oh, not a bad need at all from Kierby. Yeah, he very much still has the uh, stars in him when it comes to the uh, utility usage. Molotov gonna go even further at repelling this offensive in towards short now. Kadian actually being brought down low inside of this B bomb site. That's from Orman just landing damage through the smoke gate at the ramp. And he's here alone. No one else for North at this A bomb site at present. And this is going to leave Gade in a pretty horrible spot. He has to go and do something magnificent. And instead, it's Kaze to find him. Now he's going to be hard pressed to get much more done here. Players pushing him. And Kaze forced off the angle at short. Missed shot. And that's Valde trying to peek on the back of it. AZ up through long. And we're into this two on two. The frag's going left and right. Vici bomb planted for short. And now Kadian's been dropped. Advent trying to set up at this portion of the map. And AZ has spotted the man. Surely inside of the bomb site. But no, Zoking. Goes unnoticed, goes undetected. Vici tying this up 12 to 12 on North's map pick. There's no money left for the Danes. Vici looking to try and move back into the lead. And one of the big questions was how would this T side look? It certainly looks better than it did yesterday versus Greyhounds. If North win that round as well, they win the game likely off the back of it. They get their second reset of the half as soon as Vici get their second T-side round. And the, in fact, with them losing it, their money's going to be broken as a result, as you say. So this is going to put Vici in the lead, Harry. Certainly not what North wanted. With a major spot on the line, this map pick was a necessity. Oh, he might catch his long back row. 
Freeman's actually going to double back towards middle and screw it. Ormond's not needed. Freeman finds all three. Kadian only a P250 and Zoking will send him packing. And this has just been a clean sweep from Vici Gaming. They catch the long, long aggro play. They push into B as a result, knowing this site's going to be empty or at least likely going to be empty. Okay. Any damage is lovely because it will not give him the satisfaction. 13 rounds as Vici keep five players alive. It was a slow T start with their only round getting reset before North hit set six on this CT side. And now we have a double round streak from Vici. That's where things get very, very dangerous. North's money on the line as well and no AWP either to play with. Oh, and they're going to call in a tactical pause. And this is important to note because it's their last tactical pause they had available. They are all gone. Vici always seem to do such a good job of holding on to these. They haven't called in a single pause yet. They're just sitting on them. So lots of potential for them to make some crazy decisions towards the end of this match, if they'd like to. Right now, though, the default, the standard, that's been working from Vici. They seem like they've cracked the code as to how to break apart this CT side from north. Notably, they've just been taking control of Catwalk, having a couple of players over towards the B side of things, denying any early aggression there. One thing I would like to see from North is maybe a bit more emphasis once again over towards this long portion of the map. You think Valder, he's been allowed to get a lot of free real estate there time and time again. And Vici have actually been pretty lax on the long control. We do see Kirby head towards this portion of the map along with Valder. So you've got the two men for the job posted up here. Vici once again returning to short. Starting to push on down, and this time Val there maybe does look a bit more curious as to what Long has in store. I think one of the the long control for Vici would be a pro, would, would be a problem if we had this AWP on car from North locking down these short takes. But Vici have not been pressured from Long at all when hitting this site, so they have no need to split a player around, try and get rid of that AWP from the car. It's just not in effect. North don't have the money for it, and Vici should know that factor. I'm about to heavy hit this A site as well, Valde timely rotation he's going to be coming back from the deep depths of the pit very well timed as the flash goes over for Kadian. and Kiebi should get a chance to peek but everyone's blind and Kiebi can only find one there's a double trade freeman staying alive on 15 hp and that bomb still on the site for vici valdi cannot find a thing kaze rips his head clean off and north another save up against 14 rounds to vici they need to get these guns out they can't afford to go down after this one and vici they are doing it on North's map pick. 14-12, no money for North. And Vici on the edge of taking away a map. The North have looked good on as of late. Vici, meanwhile, this is a map that they've physically played once. <laughs> At least with this current roster. And even if you go back and you look at these guys as individual players and the teams that they've been on, I think it's something ridiculous that like they played it 16 times in the last year. On separate teams. On separate teams. That's like the pool. If, if I add up the total of every player in the last year. So <laughs> the fact that they've been able to crack this one and, and, you know, really look hands down better than what we saw the other day versus Graham, right? But the CT side, sure, that looked good. The T side, there it fell to bits, right? To be honest, Harry, I think, you know, what we all know is that the Asian minor needs another spot to the major. That's what everyone's been saying, right? Yeah. They've been saying European minor gets one too many. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Asian minor gets not enough. I mean, hey, they're certainly dismembering that argument right now. 14-12. North, if there was anything left in the tank, this is when you need it. Right now, they're getting siphoned. Vici, full buy, everything to play with. North, quite the opposite. Kiebi doesn't even have a rifle, and he's been playing so well as well. That's a real heartbreaker. Him and Valdi have been doing their damned best on the CT side. Now, Kadian's going to try and flash Kiebi into the fight, but that smoke actually might prohibit his line of sight. He's Gonna have to drop off, and in the meantime, Vici's setting up towards B, Gade. He's been great at finding a minimum of two kills pretty much every single time that Vici have pushed here. The issue is he is the only man in position. He is, but he has recovered so much in this CT side half. He had yeah. three kills coming into it, so he's been instrumental in a lot of these big moments. A lot of these big holds has come on the back of Gade, and we need to see that again from him. 
holding down the angle. Oh. Gade flashes Rain in. He's fully blind. He can't see a thing. And now AZ up in the window, going to get blindsided by Freeman down in middle. North, they've got a save. They're not even going to attempt to get near this B bomb site. And Vici sitting on map point. Dust two, just one round away from moving 1 0 up in this series. Dear, oh dear. North. They can't even save guns, Harry. Freeman's in the spawn with 23 kills and Valdez has been picked apart. Two men left up for North and Vici Gaming. They are one round away from stealing North's map pick in a best of three where the next map coming up, they've already beaten North on today. Not just any map, it was a 16-8. It wasn't even close, Harry. Now, of course, as mentioned on the desk, North will be starting on the CT side. That's gonna be good for momentum. It's a map they can play, but Harry, this is crazy. Yeah, I'll be honest, right? Uh, when I looked at this series, I imagine if Vici were going to get a map, I imagine it would be Dust too. I think this is going to be a three mapper. And I think North take Inferno. Just for the sole reason that Vici, a big part of it is you look at their Dust 2, really you had one game to go off of yesterday if you're North when it comes to planning around this and seeing how you want to head into it. If you think about it, they played you on Inferno earlier. They wrecked you on it. So you've got a lot to go back, a lot to look at and study and learn from if you're North. Now, they haven't had exactly the most amount of time to do that. But I would love for this to be a three-map series. Culminating on Mirage, a great map for both teams. One that Vici up until yesterday were undefeated on within the Asia Minor. There are so many great storylines, but point is now Vici sitting on map point here on the map pick of North. They were the favorites to get through the EU Minor. The EU Minor is often looked at as, you know, the, the main attraction. And they sit one round away from moving 0-1 down in this series. Orman holding short. The rest of Vici this time around taking long control. First time we've seen them even address this portion of the map over on this T side. North do have four players stacked up inside of A. This is a whole new can of worms that North have not even had the displeasure of tasting here. Vici, as you say, out on long, we do have this heavy cat presence for North. Waiting for the flash is going to be Valdi and Kiebi holding contact. But Orman, he's just not going for it. He's waiting for this team to get the bomb down so he can play that post plant, catch up players when they're not expecting it. Now, the re-aggression from Kierbi is alone, and that's going to get picked off. Orman with a man advantage taken, but Valdi surely should be able to get this trade with a flashbang there. He does. The long push coming through, and Kadian's up on the site. One player blindsided. They line up for him. Kadian does a lot of damage. He might have just saved this round, at least for the time being, because with 25 seconds on the clock, we need a hero, and a hero has stepped up to the mark. Freeman with two. 4 HP as he sits on this site. He'll finish it off. Vici are going forward to map up in this series. Freeman absolutely tearing North to shreds, and he just looks despicably good. Now the three players you want to see stepping up in order. It's Freeman, Kaze, and Zoking topping the charts. Orman's there as well. Everyone is firing on all cylinders over on the side of Vici as they move 1-0 up in this series on North's map pick. It's Inferno coming up next. The map pick of Vici. Can they keep the good times rolling or will North pull it back? Find out after the break.